Welcome back. I'm Tedward. Welcome to not a very sunny Southern California, but we're here with the 2024 Maserati Gran Turismo Trofeo. This comes in two trim levels, the Modena and the Trofeo. The Trofeo is the fast one. This has 542 horsepower, 479 pound-feet of torque from its twin turbocharged V6. Three liters, and that sounds familiar because it's the same engine as the MC20. I do love the MC20. It's a frenetic, outrageous supercar that kind of feels like the modern F40. So it's fun to see that engine get transferred into the Grand Touring vehicles as well. Gone are the days of the V8 Gran Turismo, and that was really the charming thing about the Gran Turismo in the past. It wasn't the best car in the world, it wasn't the cheapest car in the world, and it certainly had its depreciation on the table for anyone thinking of buying them new. But its sonorous Ferrari V8 made it worth it, especially if you had the convertible versions. Now that we have the redesigned Gran Turismo, we get new style, a little bit of MC20 vibes from the Gran Turismo. But to me, I think this is a beautiful car. I think proportionally it's great. There's still something about the old GT, the old Gran Turismo that really did it for me. But I am glad that this has still evolved and made its way into the 2020s as a new vehicle, a new platform. I did not want to see this go away because Maserati is a cool brand. And I think sometimes people overlook it. Now this is expensive. As spec, this is $229,000. So that's no small amount of money to put into something when maybe you could be buying a used Bentley or a Porsche 911. That's a, that goes a long way in this world. But if you want an Italian sports car with the charm of an Italian sports car, there's not a whole lot of other places to go unless you're on some exclusive Ferrari list. But first, let's take a look around. We have white on red. This obviously fits into my garage pretty well now that I've got the white on red Honda Civic Type R and GX460. The leather in here is really bright. This is like, I don't know that I've ever seen a red quite this wild. You've got the Maserati Trident here since 1914 on the side to remind you what you're in. But I do think that they did a good job of making the interior feel special. It does feel Italian. It does feel premium. And there's like lovely deviated stitching on a leather dashboard. There's a proper sized steering wheel with column mounted paddles that give you that supercar feel and decent controls on the center console. This one has the Sonos Faber sound system, which is pretty darn impressive. You've got the metal brake and accelerator pedals. And let's take a look under the hood. Now this is like a pretty big hood and one of my favorite touches on the car is the Trofeo badge has that silver chromey thing on the outside, but then it's got this surround in red. So it just looks a little extra special. Under here, set way back. This is great. This is a proper front mid engine vehicle. I mean, there is not a cylinder beyond that front axle. And this is all wheel drive. It is fast. This will rip. So there's no jokes about the performance of this car. Although it's a little bit heavy, it does feel rigid. And we're going to go drive it and kind of explore that together. But under here, yeah, this is pretty cool because this is a proper Italian engine and they call it the Nettuno. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Maybe I need to say a Nettuno, but it is refreshing to have a properly Italian car that has Italian stuff in it instead of getting British cars like the Aston Martin or the Bentley, which are pretty much German cars at this point because that's the DNA underneath. Gluing us to the road up front is a 265 section tire and a 295 section tire in the rear. There are some proportionally awkward things with these. They look, oh man, it's odd because this is not a small wheel. It's a 20 inch wheel, but the car is large. So there's like this big gap here. Now, from a dynamic standpoint, that's a good thing. It gives you a little bit of rebound. It gives you some ground clearance. We're not going to trash this front uh, valence on the car, but from a style standpoint, it almost looks a little too tall. And it's possible because the rear wheel is actually a 21 inch wheel that it makes the front look a little small, but that doesn't matter because we're gonna get out there and see what the handling is like in the rear. Beautiful quad tipped exhaust, a little bit of a diffuser back here. We'll take a look under this because you know, this is gonna be your daily driver. You're gonna use this all the time. It's not gonna be like super special supercar. 
pretty decent luggage room. It could use a little more, but it's fine. And uh, you don't get a spare tire, but you do get the goo and the compressor. So good luck to you if anything goes wrong. I guess that's just the state of the situation in 2024. Very few spare tires. Opening the door, there is no actual physical door handle. You just push the little button in there, but still easy to access and you get something to pull. No funky things that you know move out. I don't like that. That drives me nuts. Um, and inside, oh yes, this is where the car starts to come together for me because if there's anything that's like a little frumpy outside, it's all solved inside. Now, you might not love touch screens and that kind of thing, but I do just think that it's a simple, nice layout. I like the two-tone with the red and the black, and you still get your little Maserati clock guy up here. I wish that was just jewelry, like a proper analog clock with dials, but alas, everything is a screen these days. The only thing that I feel like sets this car apart a little bit where you're thinking, man, this is a lot of money. It's like these little plasticky buttons and stuff, but let's start it up. So maybe you're missing that V8 vibe, and maybe you want some outrageous thing, but this still is exciting. It's not a nothing car. We've got wireless Apple CarPlay. I can put my phone there and it'll charge. That's nice and sturdy. That's a good spot. So ergonomically, there's some cool stuff in this car that I appreciate. And uh, yeah, let's uh, throw it in drive. Our gear selectors are right here. That was annoying what I just did. I didn't really want to change that, but alas, here we are. And now I don't know how to change it back. I don't want that to happen. <laughs> Uh-oh, uh, that's annoying. Okay, I guess that's how you do that. Auto start stop is a very frustrating fact of life in cars today, but we can throw it into sport mode and that will hopefully help us out. <laughs> All right, so if you were wondering if going away from a V8 to a twin turbo V6 is gonna provide a slower car or a lesser driving experience, um, yeah, no, this is a ripper. This thing friggin' moves. Not to mention the fact that it's all-wheel drive instead of what we had come to love and appreciate in the rear-wheel drive platform that was the Gran Turismo of the past. But having an all-wheel drive platform that's rear bias allows you to put stupid amounts of torque down and accelerate from a dig. Like, this puts it on par with, with its contemporaries in terms of straight-line acceleration off the line. I do worry a little bit. There's very little sidewall. And there's some potholes out here. These roads are better curated than the ones that I drive back home. But still, you've got to be a little bit concerned about that. And then put it in manual mode. <laughs> oh, we've got some enthusiasts. First, we've got traffic ahead. Our heads up display changes in Corsa mode. It's kind of a crazy heads up display. It, it displays information for sure, but it's pretty bright. It's almost distracting. short shifted the gear changes are noticeable they 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 give a nice little hit some great feedback it's a formidable little cruiser man it rips if you were wondering if it still has the chops or if it if it can keep up with anything i mean yeah this thing this thing is a monster the character this engine is such that it just wants to rev it wants to be way up there knock my water bottle out 
enough ground clearance to get the job done here, which is nice too. But you know, this is a, not a small car and it's managing to kind of dip in and out of these corners really well. a little stiff you know over the bumps you'll get a little bounce has a little bit of a tricky time just putting that tire back down on some of this uglier stuff but it's it still does a good job I don't feel like I'm losing the car it just I am skipping a little bit now I'm in Corsa mode of course and you can change that you can change your suspension mode from soft to hard and all that kind of stuff so you know depending on what surface you're on you can make adjustments so now that I've had a little bit of seat time in this, I'm more impressed with it than I thought I would be. I think I've been a little down, personally, if my opinion matters at all in this situation, that when the Gran Turismo came out, I wasn't that excited about the design. Um, I wasn't that excited that we were losing a V8, but this is one of those vehicles you need to experience, you need to drive, you need to drive the MC20, you definitely need to drive this. They're fun, they're Italian they still have some fizz, more fizz than a lot of their competitors. And even if maybe by the numbers, it doesn't beat some of those for the money, I can assure you, you're gonna get an engaging driving experience. And that this is a fun daily driver that's an engaging driver. And it's really difficult to complain about that because it has charm, it has some style, it's got a fun V6, I mean, come on. So we've had our fun. That's going to do it for the Maserati Gran Turismo. The Trofeo. <laughs> and honestly, I have to say, I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed. I was not expecting to like this car as much as I did. I think we sometimes harp on Maserati for, you know, Ghibli and Quattroporte. And sometimes it's a joke and depreciation. And, the, you know, but these are the kind of cars where you can go into a dealership. They will be available. You probably get them off MSRP. And they're fun and they're lively and they handle and they're rigid and they're fast. And holy cow, I just wasn't expecting it. Like, yes, some of the switch gear, you know, piano black stuff, not the best. But all is forgiven when you wind out this V6. It is a little monster, and this all-wheel drive system is is is, is a happy, phenomenal little treasure. <laughs> so, it's your money. You need to play the game of, is it worth it? And I can't make that decision for you, but I do think that if this was even remotely on your radar, you should, at the very least, go drive one. Go see what it is. Don't overlook it. If you If it speaks to you at all, go for it. Go take a look. Go take it for a drive. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one.